One of my favorite things to make is a envelope junk journal. And what I mean by that is the envelope becomes your cover front and back. So if you would like to make one of these along with me, grab an envelope, grab a um, sheet protector. We're going to use this um, for windows and grab your purple and teal kit and let's get going. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Welcome to my channel. This is Rachel from Journals Reimagine and I'm going to show you how to make a big fat envelope journal. <laughs> I love really fat squishy journals. So the first thing I'm going to do is peel off this thing and because it's sticky I want to cover it so that it's not sticky. And to do that, I'm just going to grab, um, let's see, I'm going to grab a ruler and I'm going to just tear off a piece. Um, I want it to go almost the length of the inside of the pocket. And so... Let me think. Let me think. Let's get rid of an edge first. So, for this, I'm just going to tear this because it's just easier. I don't really care that it's raggedy because it's going to get tucked inside anyway. So, All right, so this is gonna go inside like this. And so let's cut this, the width of the envelope. And I'm gonna cut, let's just, well, let's just center it, it's fine. All right, so we're gonna make two little marks. You don't even have to use a ruler to measure. We're just gonna eyeball this and make sure that it is um, the right size. Where's my pencil? Okay, so we're gonna go almost to the edge of the envelope. Like so. Let's see if that fits nicely. Um, because that side is jagged, I can't line it up across the top of my thing. So, I'm going to line it up like so with my little mark. Cut this off. I'm not worried about this white part at the top because um, that's going to get cut off anyway when we cut the shape of the flap. Okay, so this is going to go in like this. Just kind of eyeballing how deep this pocket is going to be. And then if you turn it around, you can see the excess. So, what I'm going to do is go ahead, make sure that this is centered in here. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to use some art glitter glue this time. And I'm just going to put this glue 
all around the edge of the the, uh, the flap here. Oops. down if you don't have art glitter glue don't worry about it you can use Fabri-Tac um, you can use any glue you prefer okay now we're going to cut around the flap. I need to put this back, otherwise my will, my will, my uh, glue will clog. And that's not fun. So put that to the side. And we're going to cut this out. There, so now our flap is covered. Yay! Okay, now, so look at our pages. You have quite a bit of space up here and quite a bit of space down here. So, one way we can remedy that is to fold up the bottom edge like this to make um, a front pocket and a back pocket, you know, tuck in kind of pocket. Um, and then, so this is going to get closed. What I want to do is mark this. Where's my big old scoreboard? I don't know. Okay. I'll use this because I have a scoring tool on it. I just want to rescore the um, this flap, and then I'm just lining up the line here. I want to rescore this flap because I want the digital paper, the printable, to fold nicely. I hope everybody is doing well today. It is a sunshiny day, finally, in Georgia. <laughs> there we go. All right. Let's just burnish this. I closed this because um, This is not going to count. This flap is not going to count as part of the journal. Okay, so fold this in half, eyeballing. Okay. So we're going to have quite a bit of space between, um, you know, on this edge of the pages. So that will allow for tabs or embellishments to hang off. And this will flip open. Now if you line this up with the bottom edge or close to the bottom edge. Uh, no, I don't like it like that. Huh? Um, Thinking, thinking, thinking. Uh, 
All right, this is how I'm going to work around this. So, eight and a half. Let's fold this in half. Flip this open. It's a little wobbly. <laughs> okay, put this up to eight and three quarters. And we're going to chop this up. Don't throw this away. We're going to take this piece and we're going to glue it on the inside right along the edge here and it's going to seal our envelope again make it an envelope and then we're going to trace the, the edge of the this flap right here that we cut off we're going to trace the edge onto this big flap so that it will be the same as that side yay i knew we could get through this all right so since this is open i am going to go ahead and glue down this piece So, I don't know why I'm laying my whole arm on it. <laughs> okay, let's hold it up, get it, tap it on the table, get it to the bottom. I'm going to trim a hair. Just a hair off this end. There. So now the flap, the bend is even with this bend. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's trace. Okay, let's darken it up a little bit so I can see with my old eyeballs. All right, good enough. At least it matches. And you can't tell that you've cut it down. Isn't that cool? Okay. So now we're going to cut this flap off because we don't need it anymore. And we're going to glue this in. See, I can see this still. So, let's get this in here first. It isn't this fiddly, I swear. And if you use the correct size envelope to begin with, then you don't have this problem. I'm tracing the opening of the envelope to this hinge. And I'm going to cut it off. But I don't have the, re the regular size policy envelope. I just have these ginormous ones. So 
I have to adapt, right? So see, there we go. Nice and beauteous. And hold that in place on this end so I can start gluing on this end. That's just going to ensure that I don't push this strip up towards the flap. Okay, when you get up here to the top, you want to put glue across the top of the hinge and along the side. And that's so you, um, when you're putting paper in your pocket, you don't catch on that top. Okay, I see a little bit more I want to trim off. Beautiful. Okay, so let's do the same thing for the bottom. Just first couple of inches um, glue it down like that. Lay that down so it's in place. And then we can just run the nozzle. Easy peasy. Once I figured it out. <laughs> just like that. If you have any overhang down here, it's okay. Cut it off. But yay, that looks good. So lining this back side of this pocket also reinforces our cover a little bit, adds a little bit of thickness. I'm just because I'm crazy. There. That's better. That was driving me nuts. I know it's not sad. <laughs> okay. <coughs> I'm going to glue down any of these loose flaps. You don't have to worry about the center. It's totally fine. Center it top and bottom and the pages will be protected. You have about, oh, not quite an eighth of an inch on the bottom and the top. Um, if you fold your paper in half and you put it in the envelope like this, you can see right now you have about an inch of space over here along this side past the pages, right? You're going to have an inch excess cover. But that's okay because once we start to fill it, and put all of our pages in, um, that space over here will reduce. So let's go ahead and fold our papers. I might leave that for the middle. Don't worry about the white back sides. We're going to fix that. These will make nice background pages. Okay, so I creased all of my pages and I placed them back to back so that I can glue them together and then it'll be like two-sided paper. Now, if you go ahead and print them double-sided, then you don't have to do this. You don't have to glue your papers um, together, but I'd already printed this kit and um, this is presentation paper so and it's single-sided presentation paper which means you cannot print on both sides so that's why I'm gonna glue these together okay had to pause but I'm back and it's a little bit later in the day <laughs> 
So I'm just going to show you how I glue the papers back to back. And I'm just using these quilters clips to hold my paper in place. This was a huge help for me to do it like this. Because your paper stays in place while you're, you know, while you're applying the glue. Hopefully I I, I think I do sound a little funny. I had to go to the dentist and I had to get the my whole right side of my face numbed up. So <laughs> oh, I can't feel anything and I look funny. Oh my gosh. So I'm just running a bead of glue close to the edge as close as possible. Now I'm just going to run my scraper across and press it down. If you don't have a scraper, that's totally fine. Use an old card, like a, uh, a gift card or a debit card or something like that. Or you could use, let's see, what else could you use? Um, anything stiff. It's a piece of cardboard or something. Anything that's stiff. Your bone folder. All right, so that side is glued. I'm gonna keep it clipped all the way around. I'm, I'm holding the paper down with my arm now, so. a little space oh yay Shifted my paper a little bit back into the appropriate place. <laughs> Woohoo! had to take some Advil because I'm pretty sure my face is going to be hurting <laughs> when, this, when this numbness wears off. And I couldn't even drink my water. I tried to, you know, suck from just on one side of my mouth. <laughs> and it dribbled out the side of my mouth and I didn't even feel it running down my face. Oh my goodness. It also, so this squeezes out your excess glue and smooths it down. So see this glue on my table? I just run the scraper over it. It just picks up the excess and there. Okay, now let these dry before you, um, start playing around with them or folding them because
because your paper can buckle if your glue is still wet. Okay, I can't see. There we go. Yay! I love these little clips. They, you get a big container. Not a big container. You get a little container. A lot of these clips come in it. It's awesome. Okay, so. Here's my stack of the rest of my peppers that I've glued together. And I have put them in an order, but I need to fit this one in. So... What I did was I am alternating between a background page and a main page. A background page and a main page. Oh, perfect. I will stick this one back here. Okay. Now... So fun. Okay. Okay. Before we cover the cover with anything or decorate the cover with anything, I want to make a cute little window. Now, the window can be any shape you want. It could be an oval, it could be a circle, it could be a square or a rectangle. Um, and I'm going to use the, the sheet protector for the window. These are just the really, really cheap, flimsy sheet protectors from Amazon. Um, nothing special. Okay, so this is the top of my signature here. And I'm measuring down how far I want where I want the top of my window to start so I'm basically eyeballing the center of the signature here I'm probably off a little bit um, I want my window to start about an inch and a half down from the top but I'm going to go an inch and a half in from this side. And an inch and a half from this side. And I think I'll go three and a half inches from the bottom. make a mark. Right? Yeah, I think that'll be fine. All right, so now you're going to connect your intersections here. Okay, so this is going to be the window that I'm going to cut out. And uh, let's see. I think what I'm going to do is use a ruler and an exacto knife. To slice that. Be very, very careful, very careful. Um, and the trick to this is to um, make sure that you are cutting against a metal edge. Does that make sense? Either a metal ruler or the metal edge that's on the Timmy ruler. Keep your fingers out of the way and go slow because you're going to go through um, the two layers of envelope.
I can't even feel my nose, you guys. <laughs> that is how numb my face is. Okay, now we're going to, this is open, so now we're going to cut a piece of this. Follow the one of the lines on my grid mat. Look what I just thought. Man, am I brilliant sometimes. <laughs> oh, what a ding dong. <laughs> Open up your envelope, guys. Look, see? It's not glued right here. <laughs> You're probably all yelling at the screen. Um, hey, ding dong. <laughs> Okay, I have this all the way down to the bottom, and I have plenty of, what the heck is that? Where did that come from? <laughs> I swear, I'm going to be in a loony bin by the end of the day. Okay. Do a little peeky peeky and a little feel. Make sure that it's all down. Okay, let's try this again. That was really funny. You're all probably rolling your eyes like, what is she thinking? Silly girl. I'm gonna glue down this flap a little that goes down the center. And this little piece that's lifting here. And I have one more side. Flip this around and do the other side. If you do get some glue on your plastic, um, it, it'll scratch right off with your nail. Okay. Yay! Woo! It worked! Yay! And now you don't have to conceal the sheet protector on, on, the, on the inside or on the front. You don't have to protect the edges because it's all hidden. Oh, I'm so happy. Now, we'll go Get our signature back. In between these pages, I'm going to add some pockets and maybe some other papers to break up all the color. Of course, you do not have to use all digitals. I mean, you can use whatever paper you you like. So 
So I'm gonna grab some additional supplies and be right back. Okay, so I have um, added some papers in here. And what I did was just add different things in between each digital. And um, so now it will kind of breaks it up a little bit. So I've added coffee dyed papers and um, grid paper. Um, this was from an old magazine I had. And I've had some book pages, some more craft paper. Um, there's some doilies that I'm going to add more of. Um, so that's what this looks like. And I'm going to explain to you something that I did. Um, this is kids drawing paper. Um, it's got this really cool texture. I really like it. There's the other side of the graph. And a shopping bag. Alright, so that's the last page. So as you can see, I need to do some folding and trimming and containing all of this stuff sticking out within the size of the, the uh, signature. Now, I noticed that with them just folded down the center, it was very alligator mouth without even doing anything really. So what I did was I went to the middle of the signature and I set it aside. Let me just set it right here. Then I grabbed each page. So here's the center of the signature. Ugh, let me hold this down. Okay, so I grabbed each page and I got my scoreboard and I flipped this over and you can see here that I've added some more score lines. So this is the center score line where you just fold the paper in half and, and burnish. I went a quarter of an inch away from the center fold to the left and a quarter of an inch away from the center fold to the right. And I made more score lines. And what this does is allows your signature to lay flatter and curve around. All of the pages are going to curve around each other and so that means it's going to lay nicer. So I did that with um, all of the papers. Let me just get to the center here. I did that with all of the pages. And so now it looks like this. Do you see all those extra folds in there? So now it, it lays much nicer, actually. It doesn't, it was popping like way open before. Um, to the outside of my signature, I um, grabbed these two craft envelopes. And what I did was I just tucked one flap inside the other envelope. And then I glued the, the flap down. And then here, here's where I glued the flap down. So the flap of this one is tucked into here. And the flap of this one is on the outside right here. And I glued it down. Then I took this large um, square doily and I just molded it around the envelope because the envelope I had already made additional score marks. Um, and I glued it down. I used my art glitter glue and I glued it down all the way down to here. And then I flipped it over and I glued from the center here all the way down to the bottom and I put a little bit of glue along the edge of the doily down here at the bottom so it would stay in place and I did the same thing as well up here 
well, not so much, just the center part. Um, and then I cut off the excess. So now this, I'm going to put on the outside of my signature. I may change my mind about the placement of this. Um, and then here is my cover. So when you look through the envelope or the window, you'll see this square doily. And I'll end up like decorating this doily and then um, it'll become a tuck spot here. And I'll see once I decorate this whether um, I want to keep it as the first page or if I'm going to move position and stick it someplace else in the in the signature. That I haven't decided. All right, so you're going to do that to all of your papers. And I think what I'm going to do is cut this video at this point, make this um, number one, part one, and then I will continue on in a new video with part two because this video is getting rather long. So I hope you enjoy this project and that you're making one along with me. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment box below. And I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.